This is a Madani Surah. Which means this Surah came down after the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moved to Medina. And in Medina, the Muslims are of three categories. They are the strongest Muslims, the Mu'minun. They are Muslims who are new to Islam. They're not very strong yet. And their Iman hasn't been tested yet. They're the Muslims. We can call them Muslim. So there's the Mu'min and there's the Muslim. And then there are those who came into Islam, but they don't have good intentions. Or they, have strong, they don't have strong will. So when the test comes from Allah, they fail the test. They fail the test. And these are the munafiqoon. May Allah not make us from them. So there's the Muslim, there's the Mu'min, and there's also the munafiq. They're all three of them are in Medina. All three of these categories are in Medina. But in Mecca, when Rasul was in Mecca, then actually the level of Iman and the level of conviction in Mecca was very high. So the overall level of Iman of the Muslims was much higher in Mecca and it's now starting to come down in Medina because it's not only the highest believers, as sabiqoon as sabiqoon ulaika al-muqarrabun, it's not only them. There are some new people too who haven't gotten the kind of training that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq has radiallahu anhu, or like Umar radiallahu anhu, there are some new people. And also there are people who are munafiqoon. So overall, the concentration has gotten low. The iman is not as strong. And in that climate, when Allah azza wa jal teaches the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the iman is going down of the ummah, he reveals certain surahs that are supposed to raise the iman again. These surahs are called the musabbihat. They begin with sabbaha lillah or yusabbihu lillah. The purpose of these surahs in Madani Qur'an is to raise the iman of the ummah. And Surah Al-Jumu'ah is one of these surahs. Allah Azza wa Jal begins, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything in the skies and the earth continues to and will continue to declare Allah's perfection. Everything in the skies and the earth is doing tasbih. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Before I go on, I want you to think about this concept. Everything is doing tasbih. This piece of plastic I have on my face over here is doing tasbih. The fan over there is doing tasbih. The light bulb is doing tasbih. The concrete on the floor is doing tasbih. The chair you're sitting on is doing tasbih. That is what Allah is saying. The star is doing tasbih. The, the insects are doing tasbih. Thank you. This is doing tasbih. <laughs> okay? Now listen. Why is that important? Because Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, nobody should come to remind you to do tasbih. Everything around you is reminding you to do tasbih. Sometimes you make salah, and you finish salah, and you're in a hurry. So you finish salah, and you get up and you go. But sometimes you finish salah, and the person next to you is doing tasbih. And when you see that person doing tasbih, what do you do? You say, oh, I forgot, man, I should do the tasbih too. You see, when you see someone else doing it, what happens? You remember yourself. Everything is doing what? Tasbih. And one of the benefits of that, is that now I am constantly being reminded by all the creations of Allah, that I should be doing tasbih also. This is, every ayah is to benefit me. That's one of the benefits of the ayah. Everything does tasbih, why don't you? يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ This is unusual in the Qur'an. Allah usually mentions two of His names at the end of an ayah. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ but here you find four names of Allah in a row. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. Four names of Allah. The first name is Al-Malik, which means the king. The second name is Al-Quddus, which means the ultimately pure. Not only the one who is pure, Quddus is also the one who purifies. So there are two meanings, the Lazim and the Muta'addi meaning. The one who is pure and the one who purifies. That is the Quddus. I'm giving you simple meanings. What was Al-Malik? Call it out loud. What was Al-Malik? The king. What is Al-Quddus? The pure. The pure and the purifier. The pure and the
purifier. Okay, that's Al-Quddus. Then it's Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz is the authority. Someone who has Izzah has two things by the way. Izzah has two things in it. Izzah has respect and Izzah has authority. I'll say that again. Izzah has respect and Izzah has authority. So someone who is Aziz is respected and they also have authority. Now you know these two things, they're not always together. Sometimes people have authority but they have no respect. Sometimes a government or a police officer has authority but people still don't respect him. They listen to him because they're scared of him. But they don't listen to him because they respect him. You understand? So you can have authority without respect. It's possible. You can also have respect without authority. It could be an old lady that's crossing the street. We respect her because she's older but she may not have any what? No authority. So you have respect and authority are two different things. But when you call someone Al-Aziz, then you respect them and they have authority. And by extension, you respect their authority. This is Al-Aziz. So there was Al-Malik, which was the king. Al-Quddus, the pure. Al-Aziz, the one who gets respect and has authority. The, Okay, now Al-Aziz, what's the last name? Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim is the wise. Al-Hakim is the one who has wisdom. There are four names of Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in this ayah. And as I continue this brief, brief dars, I want you to try to remember these four names. I'll say them out loud again. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim.